Tonight on Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures, we return to the west coast of Tasmania, this time in search of some saltwater rainbow trout. And Steve Starling trolls the top end for giant mackerel. Folks, welcome to Strawn on the west coast of Tasmania. And this harbour, a very nice place indeed, Macquarie Harbour. Over there, the mouth of the Gordon River. And just up here, the mouth of the King River, which flows out of Lake Burberry. Now with me is Ken Orr, who's probably as well known as any fly fisherman in Tasmania. And folks, he's bait fishing. Ken, you're a closet mud eye man from way back, are you? Any way we can get them. <laughs> But quite seriously, folks, you know my idea of fishing. You find the fish and you adjust to their conditions. What we have here is a wild escape fishery of Atlantic salmon and rainbow trout. They've escaped from these netted aquaculture areas, aquaculture, I'll say that again, areas here, and they've actually done the, the recreational fishermen a favour by establishing a magnificent amateur fishery, Ken. Yeah, they sure have, Rex. I think uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the proponents of aquaculture uh, don't really understand what's being uh, created here. What, what we've got is a wild fishery now for Atlantic salmon and for rainbow trout, sea run rainbow trout. Yeah, and of course aquaculture is the future of fishing because we just can't physically catch enough fish in the sea to satisfy all the mouths, like Japan for a start. Like everyone in Japan eats fish, and if everyone in Australia eats fish, we're going to need a few more fish artificially reared. Yeah, well that's true too. I think our Atlantic salmon, uh, I think now are recognised as some of the best in the world. Look at that. Hey, good fish, but he's running us under the keel. Come on, Feel Ken, what are you line. doing? Oh. Well, you're a seasoned bait fisherman. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Rex. Yeah, you can take the men out of the boys, but you can't take the boy out of the man. Look at this. <laughs> he's running us right under the keel. <laughs> well, we get back to the basics of fishing, folks. You've just got to let the, the gear do what it's designed to do. And Ken, Despite the roof over his tool shed, he's bending right over the side of the boat and he's keeping the line clear of the fibreglass of this magnificent craft. I tell you what, folks, this is a very, very nice fish. An escapee. Very, very nicely done. This is what it's all about, isn't it? Isn't it what Just it's the... all about? We'll actually get yeah. you trading got... in your fly I've... gear. I've got the adrenaline running <laughs> here, I can tell you, that fish. <laughs> I think we've got an Atlantic salmon the way he's pulling. He's running really well. He Isn't really he running very well. He really feels like a salmon, Rex. He's a rainbow, a big rainbow. Look oh, at that's it. a serious fish. <laughs> there we go. It won't fit in the net. <laughs> we got him. Have a look what at a that beauty. for a rainbow trout, folks. <laughs> well, I tell you what, that is that, that is 
you've got bigger rainbows at D Lagoon. That's but pretty, not much bigger that's than that. Pretty awesome. Now I reckon I reckon that's nearly six kilo. Oh it's it's, it's well into double hey? figures that fish. I reckon it's really he's into six kilo folks. I tell you what, what a magnificent fish. This fish started off in the Derwent River as a little rainbow trout fingerling and he's ended up in our net as I reckon closer to six kilo than five and I don't think a lot of you will argue about that. But folks, Tasmanian brown trout are famous worldwide. I reckon there's a real good chance that the Tasmanian rainbow trout will be famous on the moon. Who knows, I'm not going to throw him back because I'm under strict instructions that back at the guest house, tonight, we dine on fresh trout. How about that? Magnificent. It is a beauty. Now the tide's going that way. Why is the line going that, that way? Because it's got a fish on it. But no fight, might be a bit of weed. Uh-oh. I tell you what, this is a beardy cod, or we call them over in Victoria, a red rock cod. A magnificent fish, there's no doubt about it. About as popular with snapper fishermen as a bad breath in a kissing contest, I can tell you now. However, <clears throat> for those of you who enjoy eating fish, I can tell you now, I've got a lovely recipe. What you do is you get a big bowl of fresh warm water and bring it to the boil and just simmer it. What you do then is get a very, very clean house brick, throw the brick in and then put the rock cod gently into the simmering water. And when the rock cods dissolve, you eat the brick. In other words, folks, they're not very nice eating. Oh, I'm not gonna kiss you, mate. I tell you what, we have a bit of action here. And the rig is quite simple. Just an ordinary piece of four kilo line, a split shot, down onto about a number 12 chemically sharpened hook. And there's the bait, folks. Harry, come in there, son. That's the bait. Looks like one of those little aniseed drops we used to sort of pop when we are watching Hop Along Cassidy chasing Tonto through the back of the old ranch when the old Mentone Theatre was there in 1963, the year of the last log jam in Downing Nong Creek. Now, people will say, how on earth are you going to put a small hook into a rock-hard, pebble-like sort of pallet? You're not. See the gap? A bigger gap in it than the front of some bloke's teeth. And what you do is you just wedge that particular pebble, like pallet, in there. And that's the bait. And what you do is you grab half a dozen pellets and you throw them over. And then as soon as they start to get down a bit, you lower the pallet down so that it just goes down like an ordinary piece of feed. And hopefully, well, something will grab it. Good rainbow, isn't it magnificent? Hey, isn't he? Isn't that magnificent? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got to oh. strip you? <laughs> He's up and out and going. Isn't he up and out and going? I tell you what, they're pretty fish too. Look at the beautiful, almost green turquoise blue on the back, isn't it? Doesn't it make for a great fishery? Oh, well, I tell you what. They, they talk about the Wild West Coast. This is going to put the Wild West Coast on the map. I tell you what, when Australians see these rainbow trout and you're catching them amongst trumpeter, little, little, little sort of trumpeter fish and, and mullet, I tell you what, have a look at that. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, folks. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I tell you what. Well, you've seen quite simply the basics of fishing. It's no good fishing here with worms or peeled prawns or even a bit of pilchard. You might get an odd fish, but you give the fish what they're eating. And the pallets. I can feel Rex Hunt's pallets for sale in the bait shop coming up. I'm just joking, folks. This is absolutely magnificent. This is Tasmania at its very, very best.
Okay, woo, he's a bit of a scorcher, this one. <laughs> oh, lovely hit. Well, there we go, we've only been trolling for a few minutes, and that bait in the downrigger got nailed straight away, and it feels like a good fish. I'm here on the back of the Capricorn Mist with my good mate Greg Bethune, who's the skipper and owner of this boat. I've been up here many times in the past fishing with Greg, and what we're doing today, we're about Oh, probably about 10 kilometres out off the coast of the western side of Cape York Peninsula and we're trolling rigged garfish baits hopefully for Spanish mackerel but various other things will grab them as well and we're using three different methods of deploying them we've got one off a downrigger we've got one on an outrigger and we're running the other one as a flat line actually we're using a rubber band to hold it down a little bit and I'll show you all that in a minute a reasonably heavy outfit here I've got uh, about 15 kilo gel spun polyethylene line on it one of the new breeds of uh, super braid line on a, uh, on a Shimano rod and a uh, 700 Calcutta reel. <sighs> we're going to keep this fish because Greg and I both like eating Spanish mackerel. They're absolutely delicious. What we're going to do is tail it. Now, don't try this at home, folks. You should really gaff them. But this fish has really run hard and he's come in fairly tired. And so we don't damage any of that beautiful eating flesh, we're just going to pick him up by the tail. Greg's going down there now. And he's just going to take the trace, lead the fish in, swim it past him and grab it by the tail wrist. Easier said than done. Give us some slack on your line, Steve. Yep, sorry, mate. Oh, I got him. OK, beautifully done. Look at that. Lovely 15, 16 pound Spanish mackerel. <laughs> and that's the bit you've got to stay away from. Those teeth are absolutely razor sharp. What I'm going to do is show you how to rig the garfish. This is exactly what we used to do when we were commercially mackerel fishing. You put the hook alongside the gar and measure where that first hook's going to go in. And you put that hook through nice and centrally and the copper wire should line up with the front of the eye. You put the copper wire through the eye. That is what the garfish is actually going to be towed through the water by, this piece of copper wire. Not the hook that's through the centre of his body. You wrap his head up with the copper wire just like that. Everything sits nice and straight and you put the evil eye on the front. And what this is going to do is centralise everything, add a little bit of weight and hide that corruption that is the copper wire and the hooks. Hopefully that'll catch us a nice Spanish mackerel. Right, well I've got this expertly rigged bait that's just been done by uh, Greg Bethune. What I'm going to do is put it down in the downrigger. Now first of all, I'll just clip it onto the, uh, the outfit that I'm using here. The nice thing about this style of fishing is you can make up as many of these baits as you think you'll need and have them ready to go and just clip them on if you get into a really hot bite. All right, now the first thing I'll do is just put that bait in the water, spool it back a little bit. Now I'm not going to put it too far back, probably only about 15 or 20 metres because I'm going to put it down nice and deep on the downrigger and I'll show you how that works. All right, that's far enough back. Now what I do is take a rubber band, just an ordinary rubber band, and I'll half hitch it around the line like that. Pull it up nice and tight so that it doesn't slide back and forth along the line. And I'll also just twist the rubber band a little bit like that as well to discourage it from sliding. Now I'll take that and put it in the clip here on the downrigger. This is the key to how the downrigger works. We've got a big lead ball, about five kilos in weight, and that is going to take our line down. Now obviously if we put that, if we attach that to our main line, it'd either break it or it'd make it fishing pretty uncomfortable. But by having it just connected with this rubber band, when the fish strikes, the rubber band breaks and we're direct to the fish. Now I'm going to lower it into the water. And we're away. And we're going to troll along like that. That garfish is running about 16 feet down, about 5 metres, and about 15 or 20 metres behind the boat. And that's a hot strike zone. This really works. My money's on this rod going off next. I'll get this downrigger ball out of the road. Yeah, thanks. Oh, he's really erratic. He's coming back at me now. Oh, what a hot fish. Ooh. <laughs> I 
I thought that fish was gone for a second then. It turned and bolted straight back towards me. Oh, it's running all over the place. And what you don't want to do is get your fingers on that gel spun line because it didn't cut me, but it burnt me. Look at him go. He's really peeling some line. I've got plenty of drag on there and he is just screaming. No good trying to stop the fish while it's doing this. Just let him run. He's gonna tire himself out. He's an absolute scorcher. Oh, oh! What I'm gonna have to do now is go up to the bow of the boat and we're gonna follow this fish and get some line back. Greg's just idling along with the boat, just in gear. And that's allowing me to pick up line because I would say that that first run of that fish was somewhere in the vicinity of 200 metres. Is this what you uh, usually do with the big ones, chasing from the yeah, bow? Yeah, that's exactly right, Steve. And why do you prefer that? You've got better steerage and everything? Well, I can see what's going on up here if I'm mm. driving, and this is not a very fast boat. Right. We can't back down like the big game boats on the east coast. And mackerel fishing like this is available right throughout your uh, fishing season yes, up here? Yes, it is, yeah. It's probably one of the bread and butter. It's the um, fish that we like to eat. It's the best eating fish in the ocean. It's a renewable resource. It's an ocean-going fish. So these fish that we're catching here could have been in the Timor Sea three months ago. Right. And we leave the estuarine species alone because they're far better to catch than they are to eat. So it's catch and release mostly on the estuary fish. Yeah, and if totally. you want something That's for the right. table, That's right. up and the logic. One big mackerel like what you're going to have here, Steve, <laughs> if you're good enough to get it in, is enough to feed your family for a month. <laughs> Look at that, folks. That thing is uh, not too much shorter than I am. Oh, we go. Steve! <laughs> That's a pretty big mackerel. I need another gaff. <laughs> Come this way, folks, and we'll show you a very large Spanish mackerel. Oh! <laughs> Let's get him in here. <laughs> Watch those teeth. Oh, I'm going to try and hold him up, show the folks. Let's get rid of that rod. Oh, let's just see if we can get him up and give the folks... Oh, my oh, goodness. Look at this. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> well, I tell you what, what a day I've had. The fishing up here in the Gulf of Carpentaria on the Capricorn Mist is just extraordinary. I've had some great trips in the past, but I think today has topped them all. Thanks a lot, mate. <laughs> That's just such a little part of a beautiful island called Tasmania off the south coast of Australia. If you get a chance, check it out. You won't be disappointed. It's wild. It's rugged and stunningly beautiful. We'll see you again soon in the wonderful world of fishing. Goodbye for now. I'm Rex Hunt.